Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining uh, this webinar. Thank you for coming. Um, I am very excited for today's webinar. And before we start, I really want to say something about myself, a little introduction. So uh, my name is Yoma Narikalo, and I'm a fine art and poetry photographer. I really enjoy taking photos of fairy tales. Uh, I love to embed the emotion to the final piece, and I love to tell stories. So I think Every one of us uh, has their own fairy tale worlds inside of us that lives, but some of us hide that, some of us don't. But I think we must all embrace this uh, beauty that lives inside of us. And for the past few years, I have been working with lots of agencies. Uh, I, my photos have been on uh, book covers around the world and on magazine covers. I also have been working with Canon Europe and this year for this new official. And this was a dream coming true. I was very happy and uh, it was really amazing. Before we start, I also want to mention about uh, the BenQ monitors I have been using for more than two years. First, I have been starting with uh, SWV 271 monitor and now I have been using uh, SWB 321C monitor. What I love about this monitor that is so big, it's 32 inch and I can see every detail. I think the colors are really amazing and as all the BenQ monitors, I can see every detail. And sometimes it's even hard when I go to the print shop and I must print the photo and <laughs> the uh, printer don't have the same colors like the BenQ monitors. It's really amazing. On the other note, I really love that the screen is matte and uh, I don't have a reflection because I'm a natural light photographer and to me light is very important and when I add it I can um, it's really really important that I don't have a reflection when I add it it's getting frustrated uh, I also love the portrait and landscape mode when you are uh, editing the portrait, you can switch the screen and you can see on the screen the same as you can see the portrait. It's really amazing. And also the hockey puck, I can switch the modes like from RGB to black and white mode immediately. And uh, that can ease the process and I can see the tones. In that case, I can follow the tones of the photos. So uh, I want to mention that if you have any questions before I open, before I start this slide, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will answer them at the end of this webinar and we will get to them at the end. So today we will talk about an inspiration, how to find inspiration, what is inspiration and uh, inspiration sources. Also, I will talk about the model look, the model style, where to find the models. I will uh, talk about the location, how to find the location, how to connect the emotion to location. And uh, also we will talk about the props and their usage. And at the end, I will talk, I will show you the, how to make the composition in Photoshop. So let's start. First, I want to uh, talk about uh, inspiration how to find and where to find an inspiration. And like uh, every other process, uh, every process has their own beginning. And for photography, that is inspiration. And every photographer is uh, is a process uh, of how to find an idea. Inspiration is a process, a uh, creative process, uh, where an idea starts. Something has to be click in you and some you must feel something inside of you. For example, if you're looking at uh, a movie, watching a movie, and you see a beautiful house that is located uh, in, the, in the forest, and you see it's decorated in a Christmas lights, and it's the scenery is really amazing, and you just need to stop and say, wow, this is really amazing. I really love this house. Wow, it's amazing. And you, you, this house left you speechless. And when you feel that, make sure to uh, uh, take your notebook, take, take your mobile or laptop and write your thoughts. Why this house inspire you? What is happening to this house that attracts you that much and that you really love this house? Maybe it's the light, maybe it's a shape, maybe it's a forest, maybe it's the scenery. Something has inspired you. Lots of people forget about that. Lots of people say, 
that is not inspiration that is something else uh, but no that is inspiration that is something that attracts you and uh, you must write down your thoughts and how to be inspired we, we come to this uh, point uh, everybody has a different source of inspiration to me i get inspired by um dreams by people by life nature i have different sources of inspiration once it might be the people tomorrow will be a place it doesn't matter it, it doesn't have to be a rule but you must have your own source of inspiration and when you're inspired i wrote it here emotion inspiration it is really important to embed your emotional inspiration if you have emotion you have an inspiration. You just have to feel something. You just have to find your own source in order to make a beautiful piece. So the next slide, I will talk about uh, the sources. As you can see, we can be inspired by books, movies, Pinterest, Tumblr, models, any other sources. And here I found these pictures on Pinterest. I, I really want to share them because on the first photo you see a beautiful book and on the book you see a beautiful uh, young woman with a red hair in the flying dress and you can see a waterfall. And you only by looking at this photo, you're inspired maybe by the location. I really love this waterfall and I want to make photo there, standing a model. It doesn't matter. You must make an action. You just don't need to wait something to happen because it won't happen never you must make an action and once maybe at the beginning you will make photos by the waterfall and a young woman but for the next shooting maybe you will add some other elements like balloon like flowers and every other shooting you will get more and more elements and you will improve more and you will get better and better and that is all about that is the key that is how you uh that is all the process and you must enjoy the process if you want to make something about photography and photography isn't the easy path you must put so much effort you must put so much passion and love in order to create something and that is really beautiful if you love what you are doing on the second photo you can see a flowers and maybe you ask yourself why why flowers because you might get inspired by looking at that flower. Maybe it's a color, maybe it's a shape, maybe it's a style. Maybe a flower is really beautiful. Maybe if you see a red flower, maybe you can use a red hair uh, woman. Maybe you can use uh, one red flower and maybe put a red makeup. You don't have a limit. You can uh, create whatever you want. You just need to go for it because every person is different. On the third uh, picture, we have a beautiful scenery and at the beginning, when you see this picture, it is really peaceful, it is very mystical, and you, you see beautiful scenery. And maybe you want to add a couple looking at each other and maybe remembering the past. This photo reminds me of that, but for someone else it would be different. And for the beginning, you will use only a couple, couple and not anything else because it will be too much for you. And on the fourth photo, we see a building decorated with flowers and balloons. And it's, wow, it's really magical. And immediately, you see so many balloons and want to create photos with balloons. Uh, you see, you have only a um, couple of seconds, only thinking of what you can create. You just have to make it happen. And that is the process. Uh, for me, I took about seven years to create something that is visual, very attracting. But at the beginning, it was very only one element in the photo. On the next one, we will talk about the models. So uh, model is a main subject of every piece of every concept. And it is very, you must be very careful by choosing the right model for your concept. It is very important. You might uh, gonna use the kid for the model, maybe a couple, maybe a male, female, whatever you want, but you must be very careful what you're going to use. Um, where to find the models, model look and style and communication. Um, today, about where to find the models, today we have online platforms, we have internet and uh, anything is visible and uh, anything you can approach very easily. Uh, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, maybe in your area you have some platforms or sites where you can find the models uh, by only clicking uh, blue eyes and you will find all models with blue eyes. I love to do that on Instagram. I love to uh, go on search bar and to type maybe uh, black hair, maybe blue eyes, and I and I Google and I search, 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 and uh, it's getting interesting. And also, if you follow the same photographer who is living in your country that has the same style as you, probably will have the same style as you for the models, and maybe you can see 
on their profile with uh, the models they're shooting and you maybe want to take photos of uh, these persons too, why not? Uh, about the model look and style, people are always uh, getting very confusing when choosing the same model for a different photography style and that isn't correct. Every fashion in industry has fashion models, fine art industry has fine art models and not every model for every industry is the same for every other. Maybe a professional models who are, uh, know what they are doing and they are very, uh, very um, uh, confident what they are doing, but if you are first time asking model maybe you be very careful because uh, at the first time models are very shy and not so much confident so we are going to the communication because communication is the key to every process you must talk with a model you must ask them what do you want but before that you must ask yourself what do you want what do you want to create with them maybe for the beginning maybe you want to create only a young woman in a dress and that's it you don't have to use any other elements because you will get very easily uh, confused maybe you want to use only model and uh, location and that that is fine you just have to uh, uh, tell a model i want to take photos of you uh, just standing next to the water in a beautiful dress and you just have to make this pose this pose i want to sad emotion i want happy emotion which emotion i have because the model as you must learn must uh, uh, teach themselves how to pose in front of the mirror must know which expression you want from them which style which hair which makeup and everything and before we you talk with a model first talk with yourself because um, if you approach to the model be very kind be very polite ask them uh, oh my god you are so beautiful uh, i'm a fine art and portrait photographer i love telling stories and i saw you i saw your um in a forest uh, holding a bouquet or a mirror and do you want to take photos together and if she says yes that's perfect, we, you will uh, take photos together. But if no, that's not the end of the world. You have so many people in this world and uh, somebody will say yes once. So don't be uh, desperate if you didn't approach to the right model. You have so many models in this world. And uh, that's the key. And about the model look and style, I want to say uh, that uh, we are going to the wardrobe, like the uh, outfit and makeup and uh, hairstyle and every element is very important uh, when you're choosing the right model so where to look uh, the outfits uh, for example if you pay too much attention to the dress make sure to make to uh, find the dress you want if you pay too much attention to the makeup or do you want to pay attention to the crown make sure to uh, look for the crowns and makeup and other dress because uh, you cannot spend too much money on a dress if it's not visible in your photos. So be very wise what you're going to take photos of. Uh, about where to look uh, for the dresses. Maybe you want to make photos, make photo shoot in an old um, look, vintage look. And maybe you have a cinema in your area where you can ask the people who are holding that. Uh, they uh, want to rent some costumes. Maybe you have a friend who have who has a beautiful dress and Maybe she wants to borrow you for the shooting and just ask uh, and lots of opportunity will open for you. If you just uh, sit down and think, oh my God, this is not for me. Uh, I'm too shy and everything. You don't want to do that because this is your dream. You must do something. And uh, about the dresses and costumes uh, you have, if you don't want to approach the, to these places, then you can uh, go on eBay or uh, AliExpress, there you, can find so many dresses, um, not very expensive, and it looks very beautiful, very long dresses. Even now, sometimes I uh, order the dresses online through eBay because when I work with designers, uh, it's not that comfortable using the dress in water or in mug when it's rainy. But when I order a dress by myself on eBay, I can use and I, I can do whatever I want with that dress. I can do, I can go in the mug, I can do, I can go in the water, and I can do. I can turn the dress because uh, I paid a dress and that dress is uh, mine now and you know it's it's less comfortable. About the makeup choice, uh, yes it's very important if you are doing fine art and fairy tale photography it is very important to go to not too much makeup. You want to show emotions, you want to show something, you want to 
people to see the face and everything, the lines, the details. And if you put too much makeup, it will be uh, not too good because you will cover everything. You will put the mask, mask in front of the woman. If you want to show emotion, you will people will see the mask, the foundation first. So you don't want to do that. And about the eyeshadow, just go to the nude eyeshadows. And about the hair, you will go with only natural look and tones. And if you don't know which makeup you want to use, maybe you can contact the makeup artist. Maybe you have a friend who is doing makeup and she can recommend you. Also, there is an Instagram, there is a Pinterest, and people you know which you can where you can find inspiration tons on Pinterest. You just have to put like glitter makeup and you have lots of um, photos uh, that is that you can go to this um, glitter look. Next is uh, how to pick the right location. So where to find location and uh, there is no such a rule how to find a location. Location is everywhere around you. You just have to see what what attracts you the most. Is it the forest? Is it the some uh, fog field? Is it the flower field? Is it the castle? You, you, you just have to love something. Uh, you just need, you just have to walk through the forest. Maybe if you go only to one place, maybe to go a little more, more further because hidden places are the most beautiful places. You will, you will find the beauty in a hidden places. And that happened to me. Um, I was traveling uh, once in a while uh, through the forest and I was stop and I walk and at, at, um, beside the corner, I saw a beautiful white swing, and I was amazed. It was in the forest, and if even if I didn't go much further, I wouldn't see that swing. And you must go, you must find, you must you must uh, want to find something, and location will come to you. I'm pretty sure. And also, uh, location is also a main part of photography of the concept and uh, be very wise what you're going to take photos of. Maybe if you, you don't have, you, you can't create a business uh, on flower fields. That, that would be the matchy. But if you want to do some princess look, if you want to do some uh, fairy tale look, then the flower fields, you must connect the models and location together. And uh, why, why I'm saying that? Because sometimes you will find first a model, then location based on a model. And sometimes you will find first location and then the model based on location. Maybe you will see a beautiful red flower field and you will say, oh, this woman with the red hair or uh, blonde hair will fit to this location. And then you will go to this model. And uh, there is no rule. Uh, you just have to listen to your own feelings and your energy and uh, everything will work together after. The next is how to choose the right uh, prop. So usage prop is also the main element in every photography and uh, you, props makes a photo interesting. And with the props, you're playing in the photos and how much elements you have in the photo is how much you're doing the composition. So um, make sure when you're beginning with photography, make sure at the beginning to use only one prop, like balloon. Maybe to, like on this photo on the right side, I have been using this young woman and the balloon and this yellow wall because I think uh, the yellow balloon and the yellow wall will, will be the great connection and great composition to this image. And I was thinking only about this balloon and only on this wall. And because of that, I didn't frustrated myself with more elements. But when you're using this balloon, maybe for the next shooting, you will say, oh my God, for the next shooting, I want to use five balloons, maybe 10 balloons, maybe a bunch of balloons. But for the beginning, uh, go for less props because it will be uh, totally fine to less. Uh, less is more at the beginning. And uh, props are telling the stories. So I'm pretty sure you all have in your houses like uh, so many props, like the candles, like the vases, like the mirrors, like the cameras uh, and everything, candles. And you can use any of these props for the shooting. Uh, only one candle, but make make it interesting, maybe in a water or maybe to hold a candle or to put on the head. You don't, uh, there is no rule. And you have so many platforms. Uh, I was using the YouTube. If you have not too complicated a setup or props, you can use uh, YouTube to watch tutorials, how to make your own crowns, how to maybe use um, material uh, to imitate the dress. When I was starting with photography, I was using a bunch of materials around the uh, stomach just to imitate the dress. And nobody uh, was thinking that was uh, a material. Uh, everybody was thinking that's the dress. And when I say it's not the dress, they say, what? 
it's uh, it's very important to see how you're gonna uh, use this material how you're gonna use this crown and it is very important to know uh, the usage and you will know that by the practice you will know that by uh, taking photos every day and learning how to do it so uh, at the end everything is fine and if you don't uh, if some of the props aren't uh, that uh, easy maybe you will maybe book some people who are doing uh, scenography or making uh, props out of woods uh, out of uh, other materi materials and maybe uh, them can do that for you uh, i was using the piano and i was using the violin which a special person make that for me because i cannot make a violin it's not that much um it's too much job and you cannot do that and uh, this is uh, all these elements are very um going together and you must be very wisely you must think about them very wisely and you must see what you're going to do next and for this i'm done with this presentation about the theory and by the way um i i was creating the pools and i really want to see how you're gonna answer because some of these questions are very interesting and i really want to get to know you better and see let me show you the first pool is what do you use for your photography? Make sure to respond. Um, I have been using, yeah, when I started, it's, it was a uh, hobby uh, pocket camera and it was very fun, they were taking photos of the people. But I want to uh, check what do you use? Make sure to answer. Okay, for the next pool, I want to Uh, do you want do you really enjoy are you more interested in storytelling or portrait photography uh, with storytelling you can say too much with portrait photography you can see the faces you can see the emotion you can um, tell a story by only looking at the eyes and about storytelling you can add a little elements uh, i'm very interested to see what you're going to answer for this also storytelling wow okay the next pool Next pool would be, have you ever or do you make your own props? I'm pretty sure you're making your own props, but if you need some interesting one, some not easy one, you will uh, book a person who will do that. Oh my God, I make them, them myself. Amazing. Okay. Then the second... The next one is which lenses do you prefer to use more? Is it prime or is it zoom? I uh, don't love zoom lenses because I own one, but I don't because uh, the focus isn't that isn't so good. I love prime lenses. 135 millimeters are oh, a bomb. Yeah, and you are using also the prime lenses. Nice. And the last one would be very interesting. Out of these three locations, which is your favorite? I love castles because here in Serbia, we don't have so many castles. And because of that, I travel worldwide to search for the castles. But for the second is a flower field and I love. Oh my God, lots of you have been asking about the forest. The forest is amazing also, but it's on the th third place. Okay, now when we answer the pools, I really want to go to the next and uh, open a Photoshop and do a composition, do the next part of this webinar. So I choose these photos. Today we will talk in Photoshop about the composition and how to make a composition in Photoshop, make more interesting. So when we open the image, we have we have this image. And what I don't like about this image is the background is very uh, too much crowdy in this place. And I really want to make it uh, more or less. I want to make them to look uh, in far away and to look uh, like looking at their emotions. And uh, this is too crowdy for that. And when we open the image, first we have a camera uh, raw uh, plugin. And first, we will do a little uh, changes here. So uh, to me, this is a little bit dark. So I want to make it 
a little bit brighter. And I will not go too much because I will lose the details in the water. I will go like this. And after I can change that again, but for now I will go like this. So the contrast, I will go a little bit more, maybe 15. Highlights, I want to see details in the water, waves, and I want to make highlights down and the whites a little bit down because I want, you see now I, we can see more water. And shadows, I want to add a little bit more. Because uh, here at the temperature, you have colder and warmer tones, but for, for this particular image, because it's a colder one, I want to add a little bit more cold because it's, uh, I want to show emotions and colder emotions like the past. And because of that, I want to go to uh, much colder tones. Next, we will go to the curves and we have maybe oops, something Wait. I must open again in camera raw. Oh, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not too much. And then we will change the hue and saturation. Maybe saturation will be will go maybe more saturated, but not too much. We don't want to um, lo lose uh, the skin color. Okay, and blues and hue. Okay, I don't want to do that here uh, too much because after we can do. And maybe here we will go a little bit like this and yeah and then we will open the image once we open the image we have this composition and i don't love it i want to change it and i will Yeah, I want to minimize the photo and I want to I want to unlock the background. We will uh, make this image and canvas size and we will click the pixels and we will uh, type this number here 6720. And now we have this composition. You see, this is empty, this is empty, and we must feel that now. So uh, I love to center my composition. So I will center it a little bit like this, but not too much. And I love to put it like this. Press enter. And now I will use the lasso tool, uh, rectangle tool. And I want to fill this place. I will go edit, copy, edit, paste, and Sutterilta, and then click this. Uh, if you have only one color, that would be very, uh, you can do whatever you want because you uh, stretch all the way up. But when you have a, a waves, the waves will go down as well. So you must be very care careful. Then, for this, we will go again, edit, copy, edit, paste. And again, we will do this. And now we center this. I don't love to use layers that much. Uh, I love to merge them always. Um, now I will make them closer a little bit more because I want to be focused on them. Okay, like this, it's okay. Maybe a little bit to straighten the horizon. Okay, now we, we see in the background uh, this 
beach and it's not so attractive. So I want to add a different uh, horizon and a sky above them. So uh, when I was on the sea, I was taking photos on the water, uh, sunset and sunrise, and I will use this photo. My recommended, my suggestion is when you travel, uh, make sure to make so many photos because in that case you will use your own photos and you don't have to um, download the stock uh, photos because if you use stock photos maybe the light uh, isn't the same like uh, when you're well, like yours and it, it is so hard to find and these two photos has almost the same light and almost the same feeling so I was uh, take, took this in uh, Turkey when I was <laughs> a few years ago and I will make a little changes like the same on my last on the couple photo but not too much because you want to add only a sky so when you open the image when you open the image you want to now again to use this uh, sky rectangular tool and to copy that on that on that couple photo so you see Copy. And now press the rotor, T, go stretch a little bit to fulfill, and then put whenever you want. Maybe like this, it's okay. Mm, after we can change that, but for now, this is fine. And now you must delete that. We will go uh, to mask and then um, choose the black color because with the black, you remove, uh, delete that, and with the white, you are adding back the details. Now we'll uh, go for the brush tool, then hardness uh, is a zero, uh, opacity, maybe I will put uh, 28, and a bigger brush, not too big, this is too, too big, and we will delete this. But don't make sure to have the line and later you can zoom in to see if, uh, maybe I will go now a little bigger and 41. Make sure to not be visible. And then, and just press this. If you see, if you remove anything for the photo, you must uh, uh, go um, with this, you, you see the same, like the base on my photo and on the couple photo. You must make make them together somehow. You see? And again, be very careful. You see, back after, maybe to push to see the what you did. You see, this photo is, is almost like the same. It's, it has the same scenery. So um, you must choose very wisely which image you're going to use for that. And when we press the zoom out, we have this photo. But the tone isn't the same. So I really want uh, to make it a li little bit more sa saturated, this image. And I will um, click this, adjustment, and hue saturation. And I will only a little bit, not too much, press this. You can change after the colors as well, but at this time, I love this. You see, you added a new image and you make a totally new composition. And this image tells a story. With, when looking at this image, you can see uh, they're holding, uh, standing together, uh, they're looking in far away, they're looking at something and uh, their past or uh, some feeling, feelings. And on the first photo, you have a comp composition when they're looking at the crowd, you have too many elements in the background. And here you have only two elements. You have water, you have them. And that is totally fine. That This composition works much better. And when we merge visible, I want now with this tool, spot healing, to just remove this by only clicking like this. Um, it is too much distraction right now. This tool um, is uh, okay to use now because we have only, we have the water and not some complicated uh, background. 
Okay, now I will. I want to add a little bit more uh, contrast, and that is curves. You see, you can add whatever you want. You see this, and when you do that, you can see like the fog uh, in behind, and you can see uh, a little bit more. They are popping up in the photo, and that is totally fine. And yeah, I'm done with this composition, and I'm gonna now file and save as and save that, that on the desktop. And one more thing I really want to uh, show you. Okay. One more thing, when we are doing the portraits, I will open this image. And again, we have the camera raw and everything. This girl is very beautiful. I love freckles. And this uh, this is makeup. She don't have a freckles. This is only a makeup. You see warmer, colder tones. But here we will go a little bit warmer. And here we will go for saturation. Not too much. We, we want to see the blush. And here the yellows. Yeah. We will open. I be, I choose this image because I wanted to show you something with the portraits. Uh, when we open this image, we have a beautiful portrait, but uh, I will make it more interesting by only crop it a little bit more because when you crop, I will, I must go a little bit zoom out. When we crop the image, you see like this, the composition will get more interesting. If you see, if you have only a face, if you see, uh, now, we have, you see, we blocked uh, the left and right side with her hair, and we have only her face in the center, and we made this composition much more interesting, and uh, I really love to uh, play like this sometimes, and uh, you don't have to have so many rules when, uh, if you take photos uh, in one scenery, then you can make it different in Photoshop, it doesn't have to be a rule. So guys, this, for this, I, I have done with this composi composition and the theory, and now I really want to see your uh, questions. I really want to see, to uh, answer as much as I can. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask now because I will answering in this moment. Let me see. If you have any questions. Uh, do I have any sound interpretations? Is everything okay now? Can you hear me? Uh, can we use these models without the li license of use? Uh, what do you mean about the models or? Story time. Okay. Uh, what is your camera? I'm using the 5D Mark uh, IV camera and uh, I want to say that camera isn't that uh, much important because you have an eye, you have something uh, to see, something to tell, and the camera is just a tool to capture that. But when you're starting, make sure to uh, find th that is okay camera. Uh, Canon has much more warmer tones and uh, because of that I really love uh, to use the Canon. Uh, how did you know that photography is your future? Um, you know that vibe, you know that passion when uh, you're doing something that you love and uh, you're, for me that is photography and I really enjoy, I re really love to create stories, I really love to capture that. For me, when I go on vacation, my mind is always open and I always see things and I always record and uh, uh, take photos uh, and I think because of that, this is my future call and this is my call. I really enjoy doing that. 
which lens do you use? I use a uh, portrait lens that is uh, 135 millimeters, 2.0, then uh, 85 millimeters, 1.2, and then for the uh, fine art pot, uh, photos, I'm using the Sigma Art 35 millimeters, 1.4, and 2470 lenses because when I travel, sometimes it's hard to uh, switch the lenses. Uh, all the time because uh, I have one scenery and then happened, uh, so something happened and I cannot switch the other lens because I will lose that moment. And with the zoom lens, when I travel, it's, uh, it's uh, everything is much better because I can zoom out, zoom in and uh, everything. Uh, do you define tricks on making a connection between makeup um, and makeup model and scenery? I didn't understand that. Can you? Clarify this to me. Do you do spontaneous photos? No. <laughs> um, sometimes I criticize myself because I don't uh, do uh, spontaneous Photoshop. For to me, everything is planned. And sometimes I love to uh, tell myself that sometimes you just need to do something more natural, some spontaneous moments, because maybe that will be much better if you plan something. But I love, I'm very per per perfectionist. I love to plan everything. I love to, um, to find the model, the location, the scenery, I write down all ideas on my notebook and then I will go to the location, put the notebook down and then look on ideas. But sometimes maybe it happened to rain and um, to see how beautiful the scenery is and then I go uh, for that. But most of the time my shootings are mostly planned. Uh, will you send us, uh, you will get an information on your email. Uh, thank you for all the tips. I never thought of searching for models on Instagram or searching for hair color. Yes, but sometimes when a model asks, how did you find me? I was like, you don't want to know. <laughs> no, uh, but seriously, uh, it's so much uh, amazing. Uh, Instagram is very amazing if you want to do that. Uh, so if you pay dress, makeup and everything, what is your income? How will you make money from this? Uh, because you work with so many uh, online agencies uh, where you put photos and you sell them for book covers, when you do uh, promotion stuff, when you uh, make photos for the clients, uh, of addresses, of people who are booking the photos and everything. Uh, you must separate if you have your personal project and your client project and that you when you, are, um, you have your own income. Do you have any particular web where do you like to get dresses? Um, I do all over the internet, mostly from Instagram and eBay. Uh, I have uh, one store on, Insta uh, on eBay that I love the most. Um, you, you must press fairy tale gowns or something and you will see uh, so many beautiful dresses. You will get so many and for very not expensive prices. How you uh, combine personal life and work life? Is photography all you do? I feel like I never have time for friends. Oh my God. Uh, I really love photography and I really enjoy what I'm doing. And sometimes I don't think about the friends or something. Yeah, that is bad. But I'm, I'm so into this that I don't want to uh, forget any moment. And uh, when I bought a studio in this one where I'm sitting, uh, I separated the private life and the um, work life because when I'm in studio I'm working and I'm vacation but when I got, come home I don't work uh, sometimes but uh, I'm teaching myself to, to not do that. Can you use dresses from big labels for those fairy tale photos? Do they give it to you for the session? Do you have to buy them? It really depends. Sometimes it's a collaboration, sometimes it's a pay, uh, ca campaign so it doesn't have to be a rule. How do you um, how do you train your photographer eye? Oh, this is very interesting question. Uh, that is lots of practice. That is lots of uh, seeing things differently. And when you when you're on location, make sure to see all the angles. Make sure to see the why, the why, the scenery, the location, and every make make sure to feel the connection between you and location, between you and the model. And you will. You will see through the practice, you will make your eye. Uh, when I started with photography, I didn't see the world like I see now. So everything is practice. Practice is the key. Uh, how do you often change your models and work with new faces for your own projects? Um, so uh, if I am 
if I'm satisfied with the models I chose for the project and if they do anything uh, what I ask for, for the shooting, uh, for uh, if they uh, have the same emotion I wanted, so I will keep them. Um, if I'm not, not satisfied, I, I will go further because you, you have your own project and you need to find the perfect model for that. And um, maybe it, it, it doesn't have to be the rule again. It uh, happens spontaneously. Maybe I will find a girl and maybe I will like her and ask, oh my God, uh, let's do a photos together. And if I like, I will keep her. So maybe for every two or three months. Uh, are stock sites uh, important to make money from photography? Well, it depends what you're going to do. Do you want to take photos for clients? Do you want to take photos for yourself and then upload on the stock? Do you want to make uh, like uh, workshops and so so you must first talk with yourself what you're going to do and then you will maybe if you uh, don't uh, if you want to see to check how it works maybe upload some photos on the stock site and on the uh, print selling site and see how it's going if it's not going then maybe you're more for the clients uh, what are some advice that you give when you start photography so when you're starting don't overthink uh, don't think too much uh, don't uh, just relax uh, don't think oh i'm not doing like this uh, i must relax um, um, don't go over to places be very relaxed and go, uh, just uh, breathe and uh, everything at the end will go uh, be, be very okay are you going to make more youtube videos yes uh, i'm not um, into you into youtube that but i really uh, want to push myself more to film more but uh, yeah i will feel more like when you look at a photo and you're in ave oh my god everything in image comes together just perfectly like you were saying with emotion school of arm tomes do you have these kinds of tricks with actual physical aspects, model, makeup, dresses? I didn't think I'm understand, uh, like, emotions. Can you repeat these questions? Do you use hair presets? Yes, I have my own presets because when I started with photography, I was I, I was spending too much time only changing colors, maybe sometimes one hour, maybe sometimes more than one hour, and it was getting too frustrating, and I told myself that I want to have my own presets, then I apply them, and then for the basic touch, and after I do uh, more additional editing. Um, how, hello, Yona, can you show us how you resize image for Instagram or Facebook? Uh, thank you, wish you all the best, and best regards from Slovenia. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, you can uh, recite the image to maybe maximum uh, 150 uh, pixels uh, to the longer side and uh, save it as PNG because PNG saves more details and the image will be uh, more, more uh, not to um, lo lose the quality. Do you think about making tutorials on YouTube? Yes, I was thinking about that and I already have the concept in my mind and which I'm um, I want to share it on YouTube. So first will be a new video very soon. But I'm very perfectionist. I love to everything be okay at the end, to film, to everything to be on the place. So uh, maybe it takes a much longer time to prepare everything, but there will be uh, videos, I promise. Uh, do you do the makeup on location or is a makeup artist who does the makeup? Uh, makeup artist, sometimes the model go to the makeup artist place or uh, she comes here, maybe she will go to the location. Uh, it doesn't have to be a rule, it's uh, changeable. So uh, maybe to do the makeup before because on location you don't want to wait uh, more than an hour to do the makeup. Maybe sometimes it's too cold, maybe sometimes it's too hot. So uh, make sure to uh, do the makeup before uh, the shooting starts. Uh, what are some agencies that you, uh, that you recommend to work with? Well, it really depends what you're going to take photos of. Do you want to take stock, uh, stocks? Uh, that is a stock seed, that is eye stock, shutter stock, photolia, and so many others. If you want to uh, sell prints, that is Society6, Unique, uh, then uh, a Fine Art um, Photo, then Salchi Art. There's so many different sites, but every platform is different for every photographer. It depends what you're going to take photos of. Do you want to sell limited fine art prints? Do you want to sell uh, lifestyle natural portraits? Do you want to sell uh, wall, uh, prints for wall? And it really depends. And you, you can start with one and then you will see uh, how which results you're going to have. And at the end, you will see what's worked best for you. 
where do you sell your book covers? It's on Trevelyan and Ar uh, Arkangel. Do you have a favorite photographer? Yes, I, I have. Uh, it is a Tim Walker. I really love him. He's amazing. I also love uh, Ole Caprisco. Uh, they have so many amazing concepts and uh, they have so many storytelling in her images. Uh, it's mind blowing, but Tim Walker, it's wow, this man is amazing. I don't know why, but Photoshop is very difficult for me to work with. Is it difficult for me to go with it? Um, because you are looking at Photoshop uh, as a tool to know everything and the program. So uh, Photoshop is a tool to, to use what do you need in Photoshop. You don't have to use any tool in Photoshop. You don't have to use all. You just need to maybe use one to three tools which will best for you. And at the end, you will make the best results. So don't be the person who will learn everything about stuff and then at the end you don't know you don't know nothing. So first learn one thing and after you will you will see. Your creative vision is amazing. Technically I can do all the edits you showed but to our Anticipate what needs to be done and have a vision of something special. How do you stimulate this creativity that inspires you? I was talking about that at the beginning and every person is different and every person will uh, find different inspiration sources. So uh, I cannot say that I'm inspired by dreams and you are not inspired by dreams. And then you will, curse your, uh, you will force yourself to be inspired by dreams and uh, your energy and your human being, uh, your being uh, not is not inspired and you won't do anything. You must see what is inspired you inside of you. Just listen to your thoughts, just listen to your mind, just listen to which songs you like, which melody is calming you, which scenery is calming you when you're watching. Just, just listen to yourself. Have you ever wanted to give up in doing something different? No, <laughs> I love what I'm doing and I want to do even more. Sometimes I'm tired, but that is uh, normal to every job and I think in photography also, but I didn't want to quit. Uh, I was studying law, but I didn't see myself as a lawyer, so I chose photography in the second year. Uh, otherwise, I, I would like to be a person who would represent fairy tale if you would do Photoshop on my photo. <laughs> what that means? Does presets fit all photos? Well, uh, not all photos, because you must uh, use the presets as a basic, as a base, and after you can use uh, additional editing. Uh, I'm selling also the press presets on my website, which um, I do the base, and it goes to almost every image, uh, and I, it's all about the pastel tones. Can you explain one of your projects? How is mined? What was the idea, the setup, the organization? Um, sometimes the organization lasts for two hours, sometimes the organization lasts for one week, sometimes a month. It really depends what I want to create and uh, there is no particular rule or answer what you're going to make that day. So if, you are, if I want to make a portrait, then the organization is much more uh, complex than if I want to uh, make a fine art piece. For the portraits, I will need to uh, book a makeup artist, a hairstylist, then I will must choose the, uh, the dress, then find the model, then prepare the props and everything to make the studio light, and, and then we will go. Maybe it lasts about one day for full, uh, full portraits, but for the fine art pieces, it lasts about a week, uh, the whole organization, because there is too much uh, things to do. Um, do you... Do you recommend a website where we can download the best presets? I'm working for Photoshop. Um, I have one, but now I can't remember the links. So maybe uh, contact me on, uh, send me DM on Instagram and uh, I will answer you. But I also sell presets. So if you want to use them, I will in uh, September, I will launch the new ones. So uh, there will be uh, much more, more presets. Is it important to sign a contract with a model before the shooting? If you feel more comfortable for the model and yourself, then yes. And if you're taking photos for the stock agency, then you must uh, make a contract. You must write, uh, sign the license, model release. But if you are doing only uh, for promote projects, then you don't need a contract. If you want to make your portfolio bigger, if you want to make more photos, if you want to make uh, for people, for model, beautiful photos, then you don't need a contract. But if you feel more comfortable, then yes. 
uh, what is the process of making the final decision about photography between, between yours and the client? Uh, what do you mean about there is too much talking in between and uh, about everything, about the model, about the dresses, about the props, about the scenery, about the days of shootings, the hours of shooting, the hours of editing. So uh, make sure to be very uh, precise what you uh, answer about this question. How much time do you spend in planning a photo shoot or uh, long does it take in average from idea to a final photo? Uh, it really depends. Maybe uh, sometimes a few days, sometimes a month, a few months, because some of the props needs to be done maybe in two, uh, two months. I had uh, one idea where I wanted to have a piano in uh, on location in 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 nature, and then we must make a piano. So it took about a month, and so and we uh, during this waiting period we must uh, think about other details for the shootings. I'll be your model. <laughs> yeah, please damn me. What is a basic preset? What do you mean? That is a base like only uh, color correction, only um, contrast, exposure, maybe some uh, fade color effect, and that's it. Uh, if you want to do more color grading, that uh, you must do additional after. Do you take pictures only for backgrounds or other elements uh, to, uh, to use in your work? They're mostly for backdrops, but you can use for whenever you want. And uh, you will, in that case, you will have your own backgrounds and your own photos and you won't use uh, any stock photos. If you have any more questions, uh, feel free to ask now. Do you design some of the dress of your photos? Uh, I want to design some of my dress. Uh, sometimes it happens that I have a dress and I want to decorate the dress and I want to change the whole look of this dress. And yeah, it's very interesting. I love also to make the crowns. I love to make uh, dresses, but I'm not a designer, so I don't know how to make a dress, real dress, but I can decorate the dress with uh, details. And it is very uh, interesting. Let's see if we have some more questions. Do you get paid when you travel or it is on your expense? Uh, it's, it is on my own expense. Because when you travel, you have so many different locations, you have so many different scenarios, and you have to, uh, that is improved in your photography. And I don't see that as a spending the money i see that as uh, invest in my job so it is very important to uh, separate it in your head it was it was hard at the, the very beginning um i didn't know the stuff i know now so it wasn't hard <laughs> i was thinking that i only take the photography is only put the uh, the, the friend next to the background and that's it that, uh, that's photography but now when i know all what i know in photography that is so much complicated even now because you must think about every detail you must uh, you must think about everything and it's not uh, only the model and the location it's so much more uh, behind every story and if you screw one element you screw everything how did you learn to use photoshop uh, i was listening to YouTube, I was watching um, tutorials and everything and I was explore, exploring by myself and I love to say that you don't have to know all uh, Photoshop tools, you just have to know what works best for you. Is it the colors at the beginning? Only use the colors. If it's the composition, only use composition. Only use at the beginning what you know, what you love and uh, what's, which, what tool you can work the best. So don't Frustrate, don't uh, be desperate if you don't know Photoshop. Everything and can be learned. So just slow down, just be relaxed and anything will be done. Um, if you and if you and a client have no same ideas about the final image, what to do? Uh, you can always recommend, suggest to the client your vision and maybe you can uh, send the photos you did in the past and show what you, uh, what did you do. Maybe the client uh, isn't um, that um, confident about uh, what they gonna get and if you show them the visual, if you show them the photo, what you're going to create, then maybe 
they will have a vision and maybe they will see uh, what you're going to create and maybe they will change their mind. So uh, uh, try that. Thank you so much. How do you re recommend to find your own style? I, because uh, at this mom, I'm editing a lot of models. This mom, I'm editing. How do you recommend? Well, uh, there is no such rule. You must, uh, you must uh, try all styles and see what works best for you. Uh, start maybe take a photos of nature, maybe of people, maybe of kids, maybe of events, maybe of weddings and everything. And at the end, you will see what's worked best for you, which will go for the best. Do you have to pay for a model? Uh, it is uh, if it's some paid work. It is uh, for commercial use. Then yes. If no, it is just for promote. Then just for promote use. Uh, how many photos do you get out of a photo shoot? I usually have two, three to four uh, to five good ones. Uh, models want more, but I think uh, they always look too sim similar. Then I ended about. Uh, Sometimes a thousand image, sometimes six hundred. It doesn't matter. But edited image around twenty images. But I could edit the whole set. But uh, I must teach myself to know. I think you made me reflect about some very good ideas for uh, this and twinning project. I'm very happy I did. So make sure to contact me on DM and show me your vision uh, once you're done. I'm very excited to see. How can you get assigned to a job? Do you shoot first and then sell, or you get asked to shoot for a client? How, get, how can you get assigned to a job? Uh, what did you mean? Like maybe you you can start uh, shooting and then you can sell the photos online. It can be also done. Let me see if I didn't. Uh, Switch some questions. We have looking for a workshop with you. Yeah, it will be. It's amazing when you have a workshop because uh, on workshop you have a model on location, you have a shooting location, and the theory applied on the photo shooting is ah oh, is mind blowing because people are getting to know what they're doing. People uh, get to know about the models, about the poses, about the communication and everything. And it is so much so much uh, important. And um, when Corona ends, I really want to travel the worldwide and hold the workshops and I'm very happy. I love to teach people and I love to share my mind and ideas with you guys. Okay, guys, I think I answered all the questions you wanted. Uh, I really want to say uh, thank you so much for joining this webinar and uh, it was, I hope you enjoyed it a lot. Uh, make sure to follow my uh, and thank you social media for future events, for future words. Uh, and news, be creative, dream, make photos. This is your dream. You must follow your dreams and God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye.